Hello and welcome to another major market movements into the week market review for 9-11-2015. I'm Kwa G. And in this video, we're covering the PM complex, starting out with gold. And uh, as we look at here on the daily chart, uh, this candle here, I want to focus in on this daily candle. Now, at first, first glance here, it looks like um, it might be a hammer candle. However, if you take some measurements, one of the qualifiers for a hammer candle in my book, I don't know if this is the same in everybody's book, but in my book, uh, the close needs to be in the top third of the whole range from intraday high to intraday low. So the high there is at 112 or um, 11, 12, 9. Minus the low, you get 1098.8, we'll call it. So about there's a span from the high to the low of about $14.10. And so uh, you want the price to be in the top third. Okay, so divide that number by three, you get 4.7. So if we take the top, the high of 1112, nine minus 4.7 you come up with a threshold of 1108.20 and, and you can see that the the day closes right there at 1107.20 so about a buck lower than i would prefer for a hammer candle so i am not calling that today's um, close uh, this hammer or this potential hammer i'm not calling it a hammer for the the day uh, because it it did not qualify. It did not gain the extra buck to close at 1108.20 or better. So <clears throat> um, the there's some other things going on here too. So I'm this is I would not call that a bullish hammer candle. Um, in short, the price also closes underneath the three EMA. And if this had been a intentional bullish turnaround here, I would have liked to have seen the price come up. And close at or above the three EMA, which is right there at about um, 1110. Uh, the week closes lower. Um, that's bearish into new lower weekly close. EWO parking right there next to the zero line, so it's neutral. And gold on the RSI, we've come down here and we're testing the 40 on the daily level. And that's often a key level of support. <clears throat> and so far we're not seeing a significant bounce off of that level yet. Perhaps next week, but I think we're going to have to wait on that to be sure. And the MACD is open to the downside on the, on the daily and the weekly is open to the downside as well. So both of those are looking bearish. So overall picture for gold, I think we're still in a bearish um, uh, position for now. Um, I do think there is a chance that the price could come down next week and maybe tackle the center of this previous congestion here, roughly between 1080 and 1105 or so. I think we could see uh, maybe hit in the middle of that congestion and then another chance of popping right back up. Let's take a look at silver. All right, so silver, we had this expanding wedge pattern um, clearly broken to the downside here. Clearly broke to the downside. We pop back up. This is this does qualify as a hammer candle. Um, however, I'm not too gung ho about jumping in right away on this, just because it's a hammer candle. Um, we do close below the three EMA. The QG3 opens back up to a bearish alignment to the downside, and you can see the intraday high. Uh, was capped just underneath the 20 DMA. So the market is still respecting that 20 DMA. Um, I, I think there's a big fight going on here. I think what happened is we we got a sell-off, price came down, filled in this price territory, or some of this price territory that um, had a very short period of time 
um, a lapse between the plunge and the recovery. So it could mean that uh, those who are bullish were looking for an entry into that territory to buy it back up. Um, however, I'm not completely certain that the that the, uh, the recovery is in just yet. Um, I think we need to wait a little bit longer on that uh, to see how things play out early next week before possibly taking another stab to the upside. Obviously, the hammer candle sets a key low at 14.29. So a daily close next week below that level would be bearish and would probably foster more selling to the downside. <clears throat> Silver on the weekly closes as a uh, long-legged um, spinning top or uh, almost a doji. Um, so those extremes of this particular week, the low being at 14.29, the high being at 14.94.95 are key extremes. So next week, you see a close above that level, above 14.95. You're gonna. It's going to likely uh, produce some fall through to the upside, and the same is true to the downside. Get a weekly close next week under 14.29. That would be bearish and could foster some more selling. The EWO here continues to have a positive divergence built up here. Um, you, we could actually see, I, I suspect that even if the price went down into the upper 13s, this would still register as a positive divergence. So, um, and, you know, that is a, a possibility at this point. And daily RSI. We came down here, we broke below the 40 level, bounced back up. Now we're in this mushy middle between 40 and 60. So really nothing to show there. It's very neutral. And daily on the MACD is closed out. is neutral. And on the weekly, we're slightly open to the downside. So overall picture, I would say it's neutral uh, for now. It's neutral to slightly bearish. So I don't think there's anything uh, here for us to really sink our teeth into just yet. I think we need to watch and wait. Uh, let's take a look at platinum. Got all these old trend lines. I haven't gone through here and gotten rid of them. All right, so platinum closes lower. It does look like this was. Uh, there is a chance that this could be an impulse up with a one, two, three, four, five potentially. And we've got an A, B, and possibly C wave to the downside playing out. Um, though I'm not certain that that C wave is complete yet. It could trail off a little bit more going into next week possibly. If we zoom in on it, let's go to the hour chart. It does look to me, this is wave A, this is wave B up, and then we've got possibly an, uh, one, two, uh, three, maybe a four and a five yet to go to the downside. There is a chance, uh, I guess, what, another way of looking at it, possibly, though I don't like it as much, is it could be an A, B, this could be a one here, a two, a three, a four, and a five. That's uh, nearly done. I suppose you could say that's true. Um, though the day doesn't close very bullish yet. So again, I think we need to hold off before doing anything on that. Again, the center of this congestion, previous congestion is a point of support and it's right down there at about 949, 950. The, MAC, the uh, QG3 is open to the downside. We're closing again lower and below the 3 EMA and pushing the lower Bollinger Band to the downside. Platinum on the weekly looks like we're almost got a close underneath that bullish hammer candle. So that's uh, you know 
nearly a uh, bearish signal to the downside. Doesn't quite qualify, but it's darn near close. EWO parking right next to the zero. Really nothing to show you there. And the RSI on the daily. Um, touching the 40 level, and you can see the previous time we touched the 40, we did get a slight bounce. So again, we'll be watching to see if the market's going to respect that 40 or not. Um, but again, probably going to have to wait till next week. Platinum on the weekly, MACD is closed out. It's neutral on the weekly. And daily is open to the downside now, as you can see. So that's bearish. So platinum, I think it's also similar to silver, bearish to neutral. And um, really nothing to do there. All right, let's take a look at the LA Wave charts. So here's my gold LA Wave chart. I give this a slight preference over some others that I see. Um, and currently I suspect that we are in a wave A up of a larger wave four flat. So it's still early on here. Um, I do think we've got uh, a zigzag up complete into wave C. Working on wave X here, which may or may, or may not be complete just yet. And then uh, another C up that I think could reach up to about the 1180 level, maybe even 1200 as a wave A. And then we go for another choppy ride to the downside thereafter. Uh, key level of resistance is at 1232. If we were to see the price come up and challenge that level or exceed it, then I think this particular count would uh, move out of favor. Um, and we'd have to be looking at, it wouldn't be dead, but it would be out of favor. Um, and we need to be looking at something a bit more bullish for account. All right, so here's a closer look at gold. Um, a, B, C up. Um, and so far it looks like an A, B, and maybe a C wave to the downside um, that may or may not be finished just yet. Uh, key level of, of resistance for this particular count is 11.1491. So if the price was to move up above that level, then more than likely wave 5 of C of X is finished, and we may start to uh, meander upwards towards that 11.80 level. Um, but while we're below that 11.1491 level, we could continue to see it drift a little bit lower moving into next week. Again, this previous congestion uh, could be tested and it's right down here at about 1087 or so. Um, so I'll have to watch and see. There is another um, measurement here that we have to consider, and that is uh, since wave 3 here to the downside is smaller than wave 1 to the downside, then that restricts the amount of travel that wave 5 can produce. If um, wave 5 was to grow larger than wave 3 to the downside, then this count would be uh, no good as wave three would end up being the shortest wave in the five wave move. And that's a that's a, um, a violation of the Elliott wave rules. So uh, let's take a quick measurement of three and I'll just do that with you um, so you guys can figure out how to do this is wave one is clearly larger than wave three here. Um, so wave three, if we take the top of wave three, which is the high was at 1126.73. And we subtract the bottom, bottom of three. Low was at 1101.21. So we got $25.52 of movement to the downside for wave, for wave three. So uh, if we take the top of wave four and subtract uh, let's see, take the high at 1114.91 and subtract the length of wave three, 25.52, we come up with a target of 1089.39. Okay, so that's 
the farthest extent that wave 5 can travel. It cannot move below that level or else wave 5 would be longer than wave 3, leaving wave 3 the shortest. So that's how to calculate that. And of course, we could come right down to 1090, 1089, uh, 70 maybe. Um, and that would be right here in the middle of this congestion area and uh, give us a possible turnaround. So, but again, I think we're going to have to wait and see how it plays out early next week before doing anything about it. All right, so here's silver on the midterm count. We got wave one, wave two, wave three, wave four, that I think is still in play here. Um, somehow, some way, not sure. Uh, we, if we do get a lower low, it could be just wave B extending a little bit further um, with an A, B, C down for wave B um, before another wave C to the upside. That's a possibility. Um, again, just a very neutral spot right here and not really giving us um, a clear indication of where it wants to head off to just at this moment. But I do think we will again eventually get a wave C up here, possibly challenging that blue trend line before another slam to the downside later on this year to finish off this 5 of 5 of C of 2, which could be a major bottom. Okay. <clears throat> Um, silver, this is a zoomed in view. Uh, this is the original count with a 1, 2, 1, 2 count. But since the price moved down below 1445, can no longer count this as a wave 1 to the upside. Um, so this count here gets scratched. It has to be something else. Um, and there's, since there's so much chop here, it could be a number of different things. But um, one thought that comes to mind is that this move to the downside is a wave A. This could be a wave B, and we could be working on a wave C to the downside uh, for a larger wave B, as I said previously. Um, could give us one more incremental low, possibly, and then our bounce up into wave C of 4 as a flat correction, to finish off that flat correction. All right, so here's GDX. Um, it's looking a little bit, uh, it's got a little bit better look to it uh, for a possible turnaround, and we'll go into that and why. I um, wanted to point out here that this previous action to the downside, you had the sharp decline to the downside, and then you had this move up that looked like a, a perfect impulse to the upside. and looked like things were really going to start uh, turning around, and but the market instead just chopped sideways and slowly drifted down into what looks kind of like a, a, a ending diagonal choppy downward pattern. Um, and you can see, zoom in, in a little bit further, that this original pop-up that looked like a wave one to the upside, it secured a low for uh, a number of days. Uh, that low was secured at 1317, um, and you can see how the market came down, just kind of floated above it for a little bit, and then right on just one day, it, the market popped down, and this is where uh, you got your stop hunters out there, the market makers that just want to throw everybody off. Uh, they just juiced it down just enough to throw off some stops, and then they reversed it hard right back up. Um, the challenge the downtrend line, which had been tested once, twice, three times. This was the fourth time. Uh, got the rule of four breakout, and we got a, a shot up higher that took off for many days thereafter. Well, I think that almost th darn near the same action is taking place now. You got this sharp move to the downside. You got this move to the upside that looks like a five-wave impulse. And you got the the action slowly drifting down just above key level of support, and then look, look what happens today. They jam it to the downside, wash out, hit some stops, and then reverse it hard right back up. This orange trend line again is being tested once, twice, three times, fourth time. So we've got the potential for a rule of four breakout similar to this action right here. 
uh, going into next week. So uh, this is the games that people play, and we just have to play along with them because, um, you know, what else are you going to do? So uh, you can't always uh, predict predict when uh, um, the market makers are going to uh, play around with a particular market. Um, and I think that's what they did today. And I was anticipating this on Thursday and Thursday there's Thursday report that they may jam it down here, try to take out some stops before reversing it. They obviously moved down a, a bit more than I expected and got my stop and uh, uh, before reversing it. But that's okay. We'll be looking to uh, get long again. I would expect on Monday you may see a, a little bit more to the upside, some choppy action through that trend line. Um, maybe come um, right back down into maybe 12, um, 1290-ish or so, and uh, maybe a pop-up above the trend line, a back test, and then um, a another impulsive move to the upside. Very similar to this, ac this action that we saw back here in uh, early August. All right, so let's move along. Uh, GDX also just wanted to point out some uh, price and volume action that also supports possible turnaround here. And that is we got the the day uh, closes as a hammer candle. So we got the shot down and recovery back up to this nice green uh, strong hammer candle. Uh, a little bit bigger than the previous one that did produce a little bit of fall through bounce, um, but obviously didn't, uh, didn't last. This action... Um, well, let me go back. This was a hammer candle. It did get some fall through. It chopped sideways. It looked like it may have held as support, but today's action drops through that key level support at that hammer candle, which the low is at 1306. Drops through that, but then reverses and closes higher. So oftentimes when you see that, when you see a previous bullish candle, whether it be a hammer candle or an outside key reversal that sets a key low, and you see it violated, and you don't see the market close um, uh, solidly, committedly lower from that breakdown, but instead you see another reversal to the upside, that's often a sign that you're getting a fake breakdown, um, especially when the uh, reversal does pose another bullish um candle of some kind, whether it be a hammer candle, I like your reversal or something of the sort. So I think that's what's going on here. We just got a false breakdown today, recovery, and then uh, tomorrow or uh, early next week, I think we'll continue or another move to the upside, more than likely filling in a lot of this manic drop uh, right back up to 16 plus. All right. <clears throat> um, Oh, and the volume action. I wanted to point out that today's action does see an increase of volume that dwarfs all the other volume levels of this previous decline. So that tells you that we've got a change of pace here uh, from all this action to the downside. We get a breakout in volume above that action, the volume levels of that downward action. So that's another indication that uh, we could be getting a turnaround here in a, another advance to the upside. Let's take a quick look at the GDXJ. Um, it's performing uh, a bit better than GDX. Got the five-way move to the upside for sub one. Got a sub two here. Looks like an initial wave, sub wave one up. And now we've got an ABC down for wave two that looks complete. And now we got the um, Impulsive drive right back up. You could see, we zoom in on this on Monday, <clears throat> we could see a uh, inverted hammer candle here with a, um, or not hammer candle, inverted head and shoulders pattern with a uh, left shoulder, left neckline. This is the head popping up into a right uh, neckline, and then we may see a small drop into a right shoulder early on Monday, and then from there, advance higher. So we'll be watching for that. Okay, so that concludes my end of the week coverage for the PM Complex. I hope you all have a great weekend. We'll talk to you later.
Adiós.